It took way too long to do this. Though this was the first time you had been eviscerated like this, you were in so much pain. The worst thing, you had been blind throughout most of the process. Sadly, your nose returned to the right place super early, forcing you to smell the stink of the sewage. Regeneration, as it was often called, was the process a demon took upon getting damaged. Hereby applied three rules. One, where the pieces intact and close enough to one another to reattach, were the pieces gone and needed to be fully regenerated, or was the demon killed by a demon weapon or an angel weapon? Demon weapon death meant that the poor demon would eventually just regenerate with a new body and more than likely much weaker than before. An angel weapon would be a second permanent death. And you had been practically destroyed by an explosion, so none of these actually applied. Squelching, squeezing, and mashing as your bloody meat chunks congregated, fusing together. Whenever the sinew of your muscles connected with one another, it was as if countless hot needles and thread were pushed through your skin for sewing purposes. It was terrible. It was painful. It was frankly the worst thing you ever experienced. And you hope to never go through this again. Once your upper body was formed and your eyes regenerated, you look down at your torn half. Your flesh pulsating as it slowly rolled towards you. Looking around yourself, you quickly realize that, in fact, you weren't in the sewers. It was just some junkyard. That was a little less gross. Using your arms, you crawled out of the little hiding spot that your pieces had decided to use as your place for reformation. You were toy demon, specifically a doll subspecies. An outwardly cute puppet like visage, but beneath it was muscles, flesh, organs and sinew. Yeah, in reality, you had more similarities with an insect, the silicone-like shell of your body being more similar to the chitin of a bug than actual skin. Your shell was white, with light pink coloration to give it a more skin-like appearance. You had red artificial hair and blue glass eyes that luckily functioned like normal ones. Doll demons were the result of a mix of the sins of pride and sloth, causing the sinner's soul to blacken. You quickly realized that definitely you were still in hell, and it seemed like there were no junkyard dogs nearby. Next, your thoughts moved to how long you might have been knocked out. A quick glance at the purge clock indicated Six months. Six whole months. You panicked. Sadly, there was no way to speed up the process outside of shoving the meat manually back. How the hell did overlords manage to recover from damage like this in mere minutes? <sighs> you sighed, biting through the pain of your lost limbs while shoving the meat chunks into your open wounds. The pain forcing tears to wildly run out of your eyes, and yet you refuse to sob. Maybe this process wouldn't have sucked so much if you could have at least listened to some music. It was early morning of the next day when the process had finally finished. Thanks to you manually assisting your body's regeneration. You're still covered in blood. The seams and little crevices of your body still leaking it. And due to the terrible way you had ended up like this, you were naked. 
And of course, a cute thing like you in a situation like this, in hell of all places, that was maximum danger. And so, you searched the various mountains of trash for anything to wear. After diving headfirst through a particularly ancient compressed garbage pile, you managed to secure a simple yet adorable puffy vest that only smelled a little like wet dog. It was obvious a resin hooker wore this one, because despite it very obviously being winter wear, it showed off your midriff quite well. Not to mention it just barely managed to contain your chest, even though you weren't even well endowed in the first place. Using duct tape, you taped the cracks around your face and arms and legs, as they weren't fully fused together just yet. It also made you realize you're missing a few pieces. Looking into a puddle of liquid, ugh, your visage was terrible. You looked like one of those edgy, cracked emo dolls, dressed up like a hooker in winter. Though, tilting your head, you had to admit, the aesthetic wasn't as terrible as you first thought. Especially when you pulled over the hood of the vest. But once you were back at your boss's side, you could easily change into your regular outfit. This was just so you wouldn't be naked. So where did the ship explode, you thought? Right, right, at that hotel. If your boss survived, he may already be back at it again. And so an idea came to you. So if the hotel was all about redemption for everyone, this would easily mean that maybe, just maybe you could enlist as a guest. And when your boss went for a new attack, you could stab the radio demon in the back, securing a victory. Excited, you began skipping as you made your way forward. This was gonna be fun. The path to the hotel was covered with rubble and murderous demons. Strange, but it quickly became clear to you once you walked past the news segment talking about the purge and its new date. That had only been a handful of days that you had spent regenerating. That was both good and bad. Making your way as fast as possible to the hotel, you increased your walking speed. Skillfully dodging the marauding hordes of demons who were still after the precious, precious left behind loot. Camilla Carmine, greatest weapon expert of hell, after all purchased angel weapons for a high price. And so, it was late in the evening when you arrived at the hotel's metal gate. Walking up and down the street, leading to the massive building, you put your words together. It was super rare that you actually interacted with someone without your boss present. And the anxiety you felt was palpable. Though, there was a high chance you wouldn't be recognized. So, with a shaking hand, you pushed the gate open. It produced a loud, foreboding squeak. Intimidated, you slowly approached the entrance, hand taking hold of the handle and pulling. And then realizing it was a push door, your face flushed, and you pushed. Entering right into the lobby, it truly was an alien feeling. As someone who was utterly devoted to their boss, acting on your own and and having to interact with people that was a living nightmare and especially since your arrival led to all eyes being on you the lobby was populated by a group of demons of course you knew them you had researched them just a week ago you also tried to kill them which uh, made this kind of funny there was Angel Dust, the porn star, Charlie, the Prince of Hell. 
Alistair, the radio demon, his minions, Husk and Nifty. And that's when your eyes almost popped out of your sockets. Serpentious? Your boss was here? And, uh, who are you, darling? Asked Alistair. <gasps> A guest! Screamed Charlie, excited. But... As she approached you, the snake demon was quicker. He practically threw himself against you. Oh, Poppy, my dearest. In turn, I thought you were dead. It was weird. Weird getting hugged from the snake. Usually he was all business. Or a cartoony villain. Or both. Ah, now I remember. <laughs> you were the dull thing my shadow spit out before I blew up the airship. You tasted absolutely vile, darling. You blushed harder. This time, out of rage. Everyone, this is Poppy, my intern declared Sir Pentress after finally letting go of you. She is the best unpaid secretary I ever had. I don't know how I ever managed without her. Oh, boss, is it, it... It really was never a bother. Oh, such a beautiful reunion, cried Charlie, drowning out any words one of the other demons may or would have said. Tears were streaming out of her eyes, and she was the next person to hug you. Your anxiety going through the roof. If one more person hugged you out of the blue like that, without permission, you may end up having a complete mental breakdown. That's okay, Charlie, huffed Sir Pentress, knowing your propensity about losing your mind a little. She has trouble with a lot of noise. Oh, 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 uh, <clears throat> that's uh, perfectly understandable. She stood before you, her twitching lips being an obvious indicator for her trying to stay calm and collected. <laughs> it's just we don't get a lot of visitors. Uh, yeah, um, you made a noise of discomfort. Uh, I, you're seeking redemption, right? You shuddered at the interruption, but luckily your boss interfered. Of course she is. He wrapped an arm around your shoulders, comfortingly, making you exhale and normalize your heart rate. You then were sat down on the lobby sofa. Around you, the other members of the Hasbun Hotel. Sir Pentius sat to your left and three of his egg boys right next to you. In familiar company, this was much more pleasant. So, started Charlie. How about we introduce each other? She knows everyone, interrupted the snake demon, making you squeak ashamed. She has researched everyone, all but Vaggy. Really, outside of her being Charlie's girlfriend, there was nothing about her. You sunk into the sofa. She was very thorough, spending two entire months researching just angel dust. You put both hands on your face out of shame. Oh, really, Tots? Which movie is your favorite? Interjected the spider. Head as red as a tomato, you whispered, just barely audible to everyone around you. Beachside benefits, too. Oh, yeah. You know, Toots, it took me four weeks to get all that sand out of my chest puff after that one. But, man, that werewolf could lick an asshole. Woo-wee! Ah, too bad he got killed two months later during the purge. The snake, as proud as he was of his little intern, suddenly had a snake hood poof up. I... I, I will uh, just... I really like that scene in the evening when the sun is behind you and, um... 
the uh, buff guy. And you can only see the silhouettes of you and the buff guy. Uh, it's really good cinematography that you usually don't see in a, you know, Valentino flick. Sir Pench has finally understood why you took so long to research Angel Dust. <gasps> um, okay. Uh, that's enough porn talk, muttered Charlie. Ah, uh, but it just got funny, giggled Nifty. Do you want to tell us more about yourself, why you seek redemption, or maybe how you ended up in hell? You looked at Serpentius, who just shrugged at you. So you were on your own with this one. Um, in hell, um, I go by the name of Poppy. Uh, I am a toy demon. We are widely known to be the result of excessive sloth and pride. I, I was born in the United States during the 80s, and my family owned a couple of summer vacation homes on the West Coast. They rented them out for a high price to tourists. We were quite rich, actually. Um, when I turned 21, my dad wanted me to get a real job, and I couldn't deal with that. And I killed them for the insurance money. I sold the others too for some extra cash. <sighs> Ouch, commented Husk. Eh, I'm at worst, people, chuckled Angel Dust. I'm sorry I did something so terrible. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Everyone deserves a redemption. I I'm sure you can redeem yourself too. An awkward silence suddenly blew into the lobby. Uh, simple curiosity, did you eat them as well? Alistair! You furred your brows. What's wrong, Charlie, my dear? I was just making a conversation. No, I didn't. Mm, shame. Because I just know a great recipe courtesy of the lovely Miss Rosie, and an exchange of recipes always appreciated. Charlie needed to do something. Clearly. You fought highly of Serpentius, so as long as the snake was here, you'd be here as well. Though still, what have you got redeemed before you... He already made so much progress as well. It probably turned into an even sadder little ball of sunshine. She inhaled deeply. Well, guess I have to redeem both of them at once. Ahem. Charlie looked over towards the noise. Her girlfriend was standing at the top of the stairs, pointing at a wristwatch. Oh, yeah, thanks, Veggie. Charlie stood up, clearing her throat. Uh, well, Poppy, I know this day was really exciting already. She really tried to sound diplomatic. But we were actually getting ready to leave before you arrived. Oh? You tilted your head curiously. See, because of the purchase new date, she forced a smile, though her sadness could be felt. Well, Zestiel put his yearly fireworks show to tonight. I see. Zestiel was the oldest demon overlord in the Nine Circles, and there were rumors he may not even be a sinner-born demon as well, just due to his age. He was as feared as he was respected. The territories he held were peaceful, and because of that, according to anyone who visited his corner of hell, his was the closest to a city in the human world when it came to safety. Oh, I, I mean, I don't mind. Don't stop yourself just because of me. But can I come with? Charlie produced a squeaky noise similar to a dog toy. She found you absolutely adorable. And just as quickly as you entered the hotel, you left it. But at least this time you weren't alone. 
Zestiel's territories were on the opposite side of the lair, so Charlie had organized a limousine. Her little imp companions behind the wheel. So there's one thing that still irks me, darling, asked Alistair. He had sat right across from you, staring at you with his piercing gaze. How come you're such a loyal follower to... that? He pointed with his microphone staff at Sir Pinches, who was right now cartoonishly trying to prevent Nifty from playing with one of the egg boys, not even realizing you were talking about him. You look down at your feet. I... I want to become an overlord. You said that quietly enough that only Alistair could hear you. You see, I was rich. And that was my entire personality. The only thing I knew. How long have you been his intern? Twenty years. You set up with the confidence of a person who was ruining their life without even realizing it. Huh. Are you sure you really want to get back what you lost, darling? You blinked, not understanding his words. Because if you really wanted to become an overlord, you would have sought out me, or Vestial, maybe even Camilla. And if you have no standards, one of the V's. And not just some third-class gang boss with a bunch of fancy steampump equipment. You're lying to me, aren't you? Someone like that snake. They don't have any... Elsa swiped the air like he was creating a rainbow from the palms. As he said, Vision. And quietly he added, Not to mention, stick with him for 20 years. You look back at your boss who was hugging the egg boy that almost had fallen victim to Nifty's needle and blushed. Smiling, Alistair narrowed his eyes. Ah, I see now. What do you mean? No, no. <laughs> Darling, you have said enough. If you have been in the business as long as I have, a face speaks more than a thousand words. And while I may not understand how you feel, I understand what you feel. He chuckled darkly, which made you feel like you had been doused in cold water. Hmm? What's going on? Charlie suddenly spoke up. Oh, nothing, Charlie, my dear. He leaned towards her ear and whispered something, which made the girl blush, squeal, and then grab your hands. Oh, I'm so happy for you, too. What kind of place did you end up in? Finally, the car stopped. Looking through the window, Serpentius asked, So, since when do we have trees growing in hell? They are imported. Uh, some celebrity in the overworld planted like a hundred thousand trees a year or two ago, and they just took some of them. Not like anybody would miss them. Answered Alistair casually. Huh. You eventually found yourself on a hill that was very sparsely vegetated. The few trees that were here obviously didn't grow here naturally. Seems as if Zestiel was as old-fashioned as his age suggested. You've never seen a regular park in hell before. The grass that you stepped on was crunchy, of course dried out. Yet, as you placed a hand on one of the sparse, soot-covered trees, your eyes widened. It wasn't dead, at least not yet. It was bravely handling the terrible atmosphere in hell. 
you notice a strange vein moving up from the tree. Following it with your eyes, you blinked. It was a cable that had been overgrown with bark. The cable ended in a lamp. Ah, so that's how the trees got light. It probably worked on a timer. Puppy? You turned around. The others were throwing down picnic blankets, and Sir Pantras was waving at you. His blanket rolled up under his arm. Come, he ordered. You smiled and walked up to him. Let's look for a good place. As you followed him, slithering, you asked, Sir, shouldn't we be sticking with the others? He didn't answer, just stopped at the top of a small slope, spreading out the cloth. And then, Egg boys, bring us something to eat. Where to, boys? He shrugged. You know what I like. Okay, boss. That should keep them busy for a bit. It took you a minute or two to realize that you were alone with your boss. For now, everything was silent. Uh, pleasantly so, neither of you speaking a word. In the distance, you could see the city. Some spotlights aimed at the sky, moving rhythmically. A thin veil of smog floating just beneath the city's rooftops. God, I hope none of us has to pee. What? Uh, nothing. Sir Pentress blushed, looking away. You chose to pretend like you didn't hear that. Absent-mindedly, the snake demon stared up at the sky, patiently waiting for the show to begin. Meanwhile, you looked over to the others. They were a little further away, just mere silhouettes. Vaguely, you could make out the shape of a round egg boy as they went through a big picnic basket that Vaggy had taken out of the trunk. Your eyes returned to Sir Pentress. And for a split second, it felt as if your eyes met... Averting both of your gazes, you blushed. You chuckled a little. <laughs> so, redemption, am I right, sir? Yeah, it sounds promising, doesn't it? There has to be more. Someone as wonderful and glorious as you doesn't need redemption. Only complete, utter dominance. He grinned and then sighed. I suppose it's just... He swiped with one claw over his snake hood. I did something stupid and they found out and I really, really didn't want Alistair to hurt me again. So... You did the first thing you could think of to save your hide. Precisely. You went silent again. But then you giggled. Plus free food, right? Laughing out loud, he slapped you on the back, making you exhale. And free food, yes! And you? You forced a smile. I wanted to join them and... At the first chance, stab them in the back. Hopefully the next time you would go for an attack. His eyes glowed in an ominous red for a mere second. Wow, you really would have made friends with them and killed them for me? You're my boss. Yeah, your boss. Was that a self-disappointment? Just your boss. Minutes passed. Furring your brows, you looked over to the egg boys, who were still busy with the picnic basket for some reason. But just then a yellow flash formed on one of the silhouettes, indicating that seemingly Alistair was talking to them. 
And just then, the Ready Demon's face flashed up, followed by the sound of an explosion which made your heart jump. Ah, it's starting. You turned to face the city. First, only a few fireworks were shot up. Exploding and drowning this part of hell in light for but a few precious seconds. A warm feeling overcame you. Huh. What's wrong, boss? His initial dumbfoundedness turned bright. Huh. Well, uh, I always saw fireworks as a waste of time. Uh, think about it. Why blow something up that doesn't g destroy anything else? But what has changed? He opened his mouth, ready to say something, but then he hyperventilated. Boss, are you okay? Y yes, 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 I, I, I am. He almost admitted that the reason this firework felt so special was because he got to see it reflected in your beautiful eyes. No, 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 that was way too corny, way too forward, that would totally backfire. And yet he couldn't help but think that he was a coward. A large, heart-shaped firework exploded. How oh, it twinkled in the glass of your eyes. Without realizing, his hand suddenly wrapped around yours. It was warm, sleek and surprisingly tender. Feeling like the softest little lizard you had ever touched. Only his claws indicated the danger he posed. As a man, as a demon, as an animal. You could feel his muscles move beneath his smooth scales. There was no resistance either. It almost felt like skin, with only the lightest of chafing sensation. Like a coarse blanket that was still comfortable. You exhaled silently through your mouth. His gaze didn't leave your eyes as he stared up. His gaze didn't leave your eyes as you stared up at the fireworks. Your body shook, and Sir Pentress was unsure if your lips were quivering or if it was merely a trick of the light. You... You were... You were so happy. A faint glimmer appeared underneath your eyes. That made the snake's heart pound heavily with fear and the light. It were tears, tears so hot they steamed ever so lightly against the colorful rainbows of the celebration and the slightly cool air of Zestial's territory. But just as he realized that the grip on his hand got tighter, and after but a single strong pull from you, the snake was in your arm. You cradled him. He exhaled through his mouth, gently swiping a few hairs out of your face. So, why are you crying? He asked quietly. During a few seconds when no explosions were happening, he said, I'm happy. You whispered into the hole of the side of his head through which he listened. It was essentially an ear without the lobe. You've wrapped your arms tightly around his back, your fingers gripping onto the snake's suit, while gently placing your head on his chest. Puppy, he hushed. Was I, I love you. His eyes widened. I love you. Y you mean like a friend or... 
You moved your face up back to his ear, your lips gently hushing over his scales before whispering, as a lover. There was a slight raspiness in your voice that made the scales on his neck stand up. Hearing that, he finally got the courage himself to take action. His arms wrapping around you, fingers holding onto your shoulders. For a moment you remained like this. Warm, soft and tight. Both your minds were racing. As megalomaniacal as he was, he was still somewhere a man. And in this moment, holding you like this, he felt alive. He felt human. He felt greater than the sum of his parts. He felt you. And he loved you for it. Neither of you thought twice about it. Your faces met. Your slimy, rubbery toy tongue was almost immediately touched by his thin, split snake one. And even though yours was stronger, his was faster. A hum escaped Sir Pinches as he put more of his body weight on you. Until your back softly hit the ground. His thick, long tail wrapping around your legs, binding you, pinning you down, taking control of you, as both you moaned and groaned into each other's lustful touches. You moved your hands from his back to his chest, your delicate fingers softly sliding over the satin covering his chest. I had never seen Sir Pentius without it, so this might be an interesting experience. The snake's fingers dug into your shoulders as he felt your fingers unbuttoning his shirt. Gulping, he looked towards the others. They still haven't noticed your loot activities. And then, a gasp escaped his lips. Your hand had finally reached beneath his jacket. Skin contact. Beautiful, wonderful, sinful skin contact. His eyes rolled back. Your hand. It was so soft, warm and gentle. A touch he hasn't felt in forever. A moment of pure tenderness. Your eyes, meanwhile, widened as you felt over his exposed chest beneath his jacket. Serpentius felt thin, but not lanky. Your hands moved over his body. You could feel his ribs. And yet, as his body reacted to your touches, you could feel the muscles beneath his scales move. He was hiding strength, yes, but it wasn't visible to the naked eye. It could only be felt, and you were glad that you were the one feeling it. He was such a magnificent creature, so beautiful, so perfect. But then you stopped moving, your hand hovering over a suspicious fold somewhere below his navel. You weren't sure if you should go this far. And for a moment, your heartbeat was louder than the fireworks. The smell of his excited body and the quiet gasps were robbing you of all of your senses. Suddenly, the slimy, long tendril that was the tongue of Sir Pinches retreated. He pulled away, your eyes twitching. His face was so wet from your shared salvia. You really were devouring his lips, weren't you? He looked down at you, his eyes glowing in a romantic pink. With one hand he grabbed your wrist, guiding you to the suspicious fold. It's okay, he whispered. 
You can pull both of them out if you want. I don't care anymore. I want to feel you. Charlie! 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 Huh? What? Nifty had been pulling on Charlie's jacket. The Cyclops pointing into the direction of the knot you and Serpentius had become. Serpentius is eating her! Nifty sounded excited. Should I stab him? She held up her needle. Charlie, meanwhile, understood the situation and blushed, inhaling through her mouth, thanks to Alistair's warning. Overwhelmed with countless thoughts, but primarily she was just weirded out. I, I mean, it seems to be consensual. You shouldn't bother them, she said slowly. Oh, so we can eat each other? She said that loud enough to get the attention of Husk, Angel, and Alistair. No, 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 we, we're not eating each other. What's going on, Charlie? I, uh... She quickly put a hand over Nifty's mouth, holding her close to her, ignoring the pain when the little demon bit her. The view was a little bad. I, I think we should get a little, um... Away from here, yeah. Alright, now I get the snack and the doll. No, 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 no. Charlie raised both hands defensively. No, they um, they have a lot to catch up on. Yeah, I, I mean, we would only be bothering them. I mean, it's been like, what, uh, weeks since she was torn apart by Alistair? Uh, nice work, by the way, Alistair. <laughs> I'm so glad you finally noticed my genius, darling. I, I suppose even a blind chicken discovers a corn occasionally, and... Hey! That was Vaggy. And she shouted so loud, she now had everyone's attention. Her face was a little grossed out. Is it just me or are Sir Penches and Poppy having sex? Special thank you to my lovely darlings, Spammy, Raylan, Deathhund, Melofia, Muffin, Aruna, Chloe Rokenmo, Chariot Bunny, These Nuts, Nicodemus D, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Sleep Town, Hella, Next Wrist, AJ Anime Girl, and Hopeful. Thank you, my darlings, for your continued support. It's very much appreciated. <laughs>